Sport Radio Show. Well, welcome back to the Smork Show podcast. This is episode 135, February 26, 2022. And I'm your host, Chris. And I'm Allie. Hi, Allie. Hello. Welcome back to the Smork Show Lounge. Well, thank you. It's good to be back. This is my daughter, Allie, who used to be my partner for so many years, and she went off and got married. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's cool that the... Um, you know, just the the formula of the show, how it's evolved over the years, and you know, we were just talking about when the smork. Oh, oh, oh you cut my mic off. Sorry about that. Um, with the smork show podcast when it was first launched, you know, ten years ago, it started on a weekly basis, and then we did that for a year, and then it was biweekly, and then monthly, and then it was sporadic. But it's funny that you're back to this kind of biweekly format. Yeah, this is the, uh, I think this is the third or fourth episode that we've done in this new format. It seems to be working well. It, it's more fast paced. It's, uh, this is Smork Show Bites. What do you call it? Buffet Bites. Buffet Bites. It's like little, dige- more digestible. Which ties in with the whole smorgasbord theme. Exactly. You know? We really stretched. You know, the marketing budget, um, I tapped the marketing budget for, you know. Yes, I can yeah. tell. It's you, <laughs> To come you, up with that. You've done a great job. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Allie is filling in for uh, the chief conspiracy correspondent Jerome Malauskas, who um, ended up in the hospital because of uh, COVID. So um, he's better now. It's good. I won't get into too many details, but he called me about two weeks ago and he said, <clears throat> first of all, it went to voicemail. I was watching a movie and I saw this number come up and I just said, ah, I'm just not, I, I just can't. No, I, it's not the time. <laughs> not, not, not the time. I'm in the middle of a movie. I don't know. And I, I I decided to look down, and it was a transcription of the of the of the call. And yeah. all I saw was, and it's really poorly transcribed. I couldn't. It always really make, is. Yeah, they never do a good job. But I saw hospital, COVID, pneumonia. I'm like, and oh. help. No, I'm kidding. No <laughs> help. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I listened. I I I, I press pause. You know, to the movie. What a good friend you are. Yeah. So attentive. <laughs> <laughs> so I listened to the voicemail, and he said, uh. Uh, I just want to let you know I'm in the hospital. I gave your name uh, in case they need to reach you. I'm like, what am I like the next of kin here? Oh this? So I'm, yeah. I'm calling them back. That, now I actually hit stop. I didn't. I keep. I, I I stopped the movie. I didn't just pause it. I called him back. He says, "Yeah, they're running some tests." Blah blah blah. <clears throat> Apparently, he had. He was just having this um, scratchy throat, and he went to some sort of a. Um, well, he. Well, it sounded like a cough developed, right? He cough developed. And the emergency, the whatever you call it, the the, the critical care, one of those urgent care, urgent care places, they just said we're not going to mess with this. You want to just go to the hospital just to be safe. So it was more of a precautionary thing. Yeah, he was there for like twenty four hours and then he was out. So he's fine now, but he's going to be out of commission here for about yeah. a month. You really let in with making that seem serious, though. Like he's was in the hospital, you know. But it, it was a twenty four hour ordeal. But yeah, no, he's much glad better. He's, glad he's better. But yes, I am in his chair. And, um, but we won't be going down as deep of a rabbit hole as he tends to That's right. bring us. <laughs> it was challenging to keep him on point, uh, I tell you, <laughs> but we still managed to keep both episodes to about 20, 25 minutes the last couple of times. So, and, I, and I've been a loyal listener. Thank you. <laughs> that's who's, that's who's downloading it. <laughs> yeah. On all of my devices. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, today a couple of, uh, we've got a couple of things planned for you today. Oh, first of all. We record these in advance. So technically, we have uh, a special occasion here, don't we? Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday. Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. Happy Ellie's birthday is this week. Yeah. Hey, that's right. <laughs> Happy 24 yes. years old. The big 2 4. Wow. You started this when you were, what, 11? Um, yeah. Oh, so did I say 10 years ago that it, it, it's been more than 10 years. It's 12 years now. 12 years. I don't know why I was thinking 10. We had the 10, yeah. Yeah. 12 years ago. Crazy. Yeah. So half of my life. So happy birthday. Has been the smorgasbord. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Half your life you've been doing this. Thank you. One more year till I can rent a car. (laughs) That's right. It's 25 in Illinois. I don't know if it's nationwide that way or, yeah, 25. 
I think that's your last big milestone day where like you get a benefit out of it until you, you like need retirement, like uh, social security. I think yeah, is your next yeah. Yeah. Or maybe AARP, you can become <laughs> <You're right. laughs> 50. Other than, you know, the, the 30, 40, all the milestones. All the, the milestones. Decades. Yeah. But I'm in a quarter life crisis. <laughs> right. So what is this with this teen mom? What, what, what's with that show, first of all? Well, um, I feel like Teen Mom was part of the crash and burn of MTV. <laughs> well, MTV yeah. has been on a on the <laughs> decline for quite some time, but um, there's been many points in time where you thought that was the crash and burn for MTV. I Going back I to the early '90s, I think. Yeah, I don't even know what what's on it now. Yeah. I, I have no idea what's on MTV. But um, no, I never really, I never watched Teen Mom, but I feel like it was a show maybe 15 years ago that was on, and I think it was just, you know, hey, are you a teen? Are you going to be a mom? Be on the show, you know, um, kind yeah. of like along the lines of the 16 and pregnant show. But um, couldn't really give you more information than that. So that's fine. So there's a I guess there's a teen mom, uh, Farah Abraham. She's been in the news a lot, a lot, apparently for different reasons. But this latest um, reason, it seems to be a copycat scenario of what we had talked about. Two episodes ago. Mm hmm. Where, you know, this comes on the heels of the launch of another celebrity business venture that we discussed. What was her name? Um, Stephanie Mato ah. from the 90 Day Fiance, where mm -hmm. she revealed in a TikTok episode, a video that she had been making $70,000 a week by selling her farts to jars, in yeah. jars to strangers. Right. But then had to... Um uh, stop that due to medical reasons or to health concerns. <laughs> yeah, put her in the hospital after yeah. some gastrointestinal <clears throat> issues. Can't um, force it out. Yeah, so she was, I guess, five hundred to a thousand dollars per jar. Wow. So, she, so this uh, ferret and I just let him go for free. Imagine. That. <laughs> yeah, look at look at what you could have been doing. I know. Right? Um. Well, Farah Abraham, teen mom, has taken it up a notch. Uh, in a deleted video, which then resurfaced later on a teen mom fan account, Farah, age 30, announced that she was sending her blessings in a lucky jar. In the nearly one minute clip, the teen mom alum explained how she did a number one <laughs> while standing next to her toilet in the bathroom. A number one. Isn't it the number two? It should be the number two. This is a uh, who wrote this. The, uncultured swine <laughs> the reality star demonstrated how she would cork the top of the small jar and wrap it all up with saran wrap the saran wrap would protect the tiny jar in its package <laughs> farah mentioned that the cotton ball keeps the smell it's more absorbent i guess so uh kind of like uh stephanie mato where she was putting these little flower petals yeah that's a nice addition nice little I addition appreciate yeah appreciate that little touch <laughs> Uh, then she would send the jar out to whoever ordered it with a special message on it and add the follower's name. So uh, because we have a great investigative journalist staff here, <laughs> yeah. we, ha we have unearthed the video of her announcing her product. Let's go to <laughs> great. it. Great. Yeah. Hey, love. So real quick, I wanted to show you how I in a jar and I send it to you. Ooh, it's so cool. And you get a video of me making it for you. So I do my number, and then I wet my, and then I put it in here, and it goes in there, and then I cork it, I get saran wrap, I wrap it all up, I put a special message on it, and your name, and I don't know, just sending you blessings of this year in a lucky jar. And I found the cotton ball keeps the smell the best ever, and the saran wrap protects this and some bubble wrap in a little package and next day shipping boom right to you i just said oh well about the fart and i just went with the real deal yeah okay loves so i can't wait to send this to you um and so just message all right so what a time to be alive <laughs> it really is I don't get the sense that she's as serious about this business. I think she just no. did a video. I, Clearly not an entrepreneur. <laughs> no, I don't get the sense that this has got the same kind of momentum as the other business. I think it is commentary on, you know, the, the fart in a jar and how, hey, I'm going to take it to the next level. 
But here's the thing. There's no way that she can have the same type of product generation frequency as that's <laughs> so right. the fart in a jar. You know, how many of those do you have in a single day? Right. Versus how often the other, you know, and, and I don't know how much one, uh, you know, one job on the toilet. Go, I don't know how long of a way that goes, how many cotton balls you can get out of that. Yeah. You know? but, right. But I, I just feel like you've got some more limitations in that department. I would agree. And I would imagine the price tag has got to be pretty steep because, you know, supply and demand. Yeah. And and I I mean, we don't have to go there, but I just wonder someone that orders this, what what happens when it arrives? I mean Uh what, yeah. What what do you do? Well you, <laughs> well, you know they've got those the, that new method for colonoscopies now where you don't have it's not an invasive procedure anymore. Right, you send your poop in a box or yeah. something. Yeah. So apparently the USPS is used to getting yeah, the, right. transporting this. Hazardous waste. Yeah. Well and I, I would imagine that it um, decreases in value if you open the jar. I would imagine, yeah. You know? So we've taken the show into a new depth here. <laughs> right. um, it kind of reminds us- intellectual. <laughs> in our old days, when you were 11, 12 years old, we were first starting the show off, we would come up with these, we, we would find these strange stories out there and just comment, comment on them, like this one. Who wipes their butt on a burger? <laughs> That's right. We are re- we are returning to our roots. <laughs> we are. That was the uh, Whopper where somebody, some customer got a loogie laced yes, Whopper and he suspected them. there was some other stuff going on with the burger. I think it's, you got to go back to like episode 10 for that one. That's something like classic. that. Yeah. Yeah. Very but good. Well, you know what? That's the, what this, this show was founded on. So. <laughs> So, Allie, there are a few people that can say that they have driven their car around for three days and failed to notice that they had a naked stowaway in the trunk of the car. But that is exactly what happened recently to a Canadian woman. I'm sorry. <laughs> Am I repeating that again? <laughs> for three days, Bethany Corker, a resident of Neoma, British Columbia, spent a considerable amount of time in her car. Corker recalled that she'd been to work twice to the grocery store, went on a sushi run, and also to the gas station. No word to say whether she got the sushi from the gas station. I think they were two different trips, so well, that's you probably have, good. I know you have something to say about gas station sushi. Oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but before I get into this, why don't I, here's Bethany Corker in her own words, describing what happened. Hat tip to BuzzFeed News. Well, at first I thought someone was playing a prank on me. And then when I realized what was happening, I just kept my phone recording because I wasn't too sure what was going to happen. Like, I had no idea who this guy was. I didn't know if he was dangerous. And he'd been in my trunk for three days and didn't say a single word. (laughs) We'd been to the grocery store together. We got sushi together. We got gas together. Like, he'd been to work with me twice. Like, not a single word. She seems a little (laughs) too cheery for the situation. (laughs) Well, apparently she's joking about it now, but at the time it was pretty traumatic. Um, I, I would imagine. Yeah. It kind of makes me think of the show Cops, you know, when someone's driving around and, you know, their tires are all slashed or I don't know, they have all these drugs in the car and it's just like, you know, they, the police question the guy and it's like, I don't know. I don't know. This isn't mine. This isn't even my car. <laughs> like, mine. how do you not know? <laughs> how, do you know? how does this happen? <laughs> so... Over that three-day period, nothing at the time seemed out of place for her, but then the next morning she noticed mud in the front seat of her car. So she cleaned the upholstery and moved on, thinking that, I don't know, somebody had gone in there and whatever. But then three days later she got into her car and noticed that the windows were fogged up and then Mm. heard a voice say, Hey. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Run. <laughs> so Corker looked around, didn't see anyone, but quickly realized that the phantom voice was coming from the trunk of her car and suffered an even further shock when she discovered that the disembodied voice belonged to a naked man. Oh, God. Corker immediately began recording the bizarre interaction, which was heard in the video asking the man if he was naked. Corker said she immediately phoned the police who quickly responded to the scene and escorted the man out of her trunk to take him into custody. I, uh, so let's hear the story as Bethany Corker describes it. So it starts Saturday evening. I had left my doors unlocked because I live in a safe neighborhood. I didn't really think anything of it. And then the next morning I went outside to start my car and there was just mud all over my seat. And I was like, what happened? (laughs) 
I literally, I'm like standing here in the fucking rain right now, so fucking confused. It looks like someone rolled around in fucking mud and then got into my car. I ended up calling my buddy and we went and got it all cleaned up. So I'm like screaming about all the mud in my seat. Meanwhile, apparently <laughs> in my trunk the whole time, I'm like screaming about cleaning it up because I'm like, what happened? And I came to the conclusion that someone had slept in my car overnight. Um, after I get it all cleaned up, like I went and got groceries, I got gas, I got sushi, and this guy was just in my trunk the whole time and I had no idea. And then the next day is like Monday, so I got to work and I had asked someone to bring me like a dehumidifier and a heater because my seats were soaking wet from cleaning them. And so I put that in the vehicle overnight Monday and it had gone down to like negative 10 where I live because in the morning it was like negative three when I woke up. So if I hadn't put the dehumidifier and the heater in, it, he might've frozen to death in my trunk with me not knowing he was there. I don't use my trunk at all. So Tuesday morning rolls around and I get in my car and it's like nice and dehumidified, but it smelled a little bit weird, but I didn't really think anything of it. So I got to work and worked through the whole day and then I was leaving work, so I like unlocked my car and I reached across and I hear, hey, and I look and there's like a face staring at me and he's like, can you let me out? And I like pulled out my phone and I started recording because I thought someone was messing with me. Why are you in my trunk and are you naked? Yeah. What? It's a rite of passage. To be, uh, how did you get in there? I'm the son of the Pope. What the f Um. realized that my doors have been locked for three days and that there, there's no other way this guy had gone in there in that time we had to have been in my trunk for three days i called the cops and they're like what do you mean he's been in your trunk for three days wow that's traumatic i can't even imagine she sounded calm in the initial like hey what are you doing in my trunk but then of course you know running and freaking out i'm sure yeah the video is pretty in. intense she's running and you could just see the camera yeah. moving so i don't know if she's running towards a friend or somebody who could help uh and this is why the Fourth Amendment right to privacy and you can't, you know, the search and seizure thing, you know, th this is why the Fourth Amendment is so important. Because imagine if she got pulled over by the police, you know, for speeding or whatever it is. And they asked, can we open up your trunk and just look through your car? And they can't do that, you know, right. on the grounds of the Fourth Amendment. That would have been an example where they could have incriminated her for something that she had no idea I know. That, I've never seen him before in my life. Right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good luck with so that one. So that's, you know, your yeah. right to privacy. Even if you're like, oh, I have nothing to hide. Well, she didn't think she had she anything. Know. She yeah. had no idea. So Good interesting. Point. So according to the police, they say the man is believed to be homeless and suffering from significant mental health issues. Yeah, if he thinks he's the son of the Pope, I would yeah. say so. It sounds like he's on a bad, like, acid trip or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You hear about, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, they say the man is getting the help he desperately needs. So let's conclude with one final clip of the victim providing some final details to the story. So he puts his pants on and they're like, what are you doing in her trunk? And I guess like he has explain. like a couple mental issues, but he'd also been out partying that night. But there's no way he could have gotten out because since my car is Japanese, they don't have the little trunk release on it. It's like he locked himself in there. He'd come to work with me twice. <laughs> like My neighbor sent me footage of him getting into my car door Saturday night, but it didn't catch him getting into the trunk. But like you can only like he didn't have my keys. So you can only pop the trunk release and climb in and then like he closed it on himself like that is the only logical explanation so when he popped out of the trunk he said his name to the cops and they were like this is our missing guy so he had been miss uh, reported missing on saturday so i found a missing person and then i had a bunch of people messaging me since it's like a pretty small town and they were like he's okay now like he was severely dehydrated and he's like getting help so he's doing good now from what i've heard which is excellent news <laughs> had a decent amount of people messaging me and just like thank me for being like very chill with him and like i'm really thankful that like the cops were really nice like anywhere like if we were in the states they probably would have pulled out their guns and like 
he was like a harmless person and like it could have gone a different way but it's like kind of nice to have like taken a step back from the situation and not like gone with first instincts and like had something terrible happen like it turned out he was actually like really sweet and like nice but like i didn't know if he had like a weapon or anything when i realized i didn't know who this was so yeah it was kind of like best case scenario that i found him when i did and that he got a nice little heater on monday night and i kept my car dehumidified for him I love the music too. Sounds like they're best friends now. I was gonna say in a in a, in a modern day you know rom com they would fall in love and like you know that's the meet cute you know yeah. Wow, I mean, I mean, I'm sure that you know he did it probably just as a joke initially, but then when he realized, oh, I've, I'm stuck here. I wonder if for three days he was mulling over, how do I let her know that I'm I've been stuck here for this long? Like, yeah. I don't I don't know. Like when did he realize I'm in kind of a weird situation? <laughs> like or did he just maybe was he just not in the right mind? I don't know. No food? Just sitting back there all cooped up, naked? Of course he's <laughs> Oh my gosh. 